Happy birthday, Pastor Keon, from Danita and Zama Bedrine. We wish you many more. Happy birthday, Pastor Keon. Yeah, we love you. Happy birthday, Pastor Keon, from Jada and Demetra Simpson. Happy birthday, Pastor Keon. I love you. Happy birthday, Pastor Keon, from me and my family, the Cleese family, and then on behalf of the media team. Love you, and we wish you many more. This is Brandon on behalf of the Lighthouse teams. We want to wish our pastor a happy birthday. Pastor Keon, we love you. Pastor Keon, we love you. Pastor Keon. Hey, Pastor Keon, thank you for everything that you do for us. Love you. Pastor, on behalf of myself and the Connectors Ministry, we are in. We are so incredibly blessed to have you. We want to wish you happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor K. I love you, love you, love you. Wish you many more. Pastor Keen, I want to thank you. There is no doubt that you have been called to the kingdom for such a time as this. Thank you for not just showing us the way, but leading the way. Thank you for not just um, showing us your footprints, but giving us blueprints. On behalf of myself, Lady Stephanie, and the members of the Lighthouse South, who wish you a blessed and prosperous birthday. Wow, what an amazing time. What an amazing journey. The book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, there's a time uh, for everything and there are many seasons. And I'm reminded that through these seasons, God has blessed you to, to preach locally, but it, distinctively God has afforded you the opportunity to not only preach across the amazing 50 states of this great country, but also to preach abroad in many countries across the world. As you go into this year 39, I believe, and it is my distinct prayer that you will go from the seasons of life of ministry into a new season of of new beginnings as you go into the year of 40. What an amazing time. So on behalf of myself, Pastor Hammond, and my lovely wife, Lady Marcia, and all of the members of the Lighthouse West Campus, we certainly celebrate you, we salute you, and we love you, and we wish you all the best through this 25 years of ministry and a happy birthday. God bless. Listen, Lighthouse Central is what it is. You know what it is. You know how we feel about our campus. Our campus is amazing. It's vibrant. It's big. It's free. And it is that for a, lot, a number of things. But number one is because of who you are. So we thank you so much. We honor you today because of what it is that you've done for expanding in a vision and allowing us to come in here and, and just give God the biggest praise that we can. That campus is doing numbers and it is only because of the vision that you have casted. So listen, on behalf of Lighthouse Central, we want to say that we love you, that we honor you, that we were following you, and we can't wait. Hey, what's up guys, Pastor Torrance here, and I'm sitting with my beautiful wife, Kim. Hey everyone, welcome to the Lighthouse service. We're doing Lighthouse from home today. That's right, you heard it, we're doing Lighthouse from home today, but more importantly, we are celebrating Pastor's 39th birthday. Woo! Yes, sir, uh, man, we making it real big on your behalf. We have a special worship service planned today. So guys, just sit back and enjoy. Worship is already in progress. Let's get tuned in. we we'll see you guys. you in on this Sunday. We're going to give God our very best because he's worthy of praise, honor, and glory. I want you to know one thing. Listen, that God is still working miracles. Hallelujah. How many of you know that he's working it out for your good? And we bless him for it. Why don't you just give him a hand praise right in your living room. I don't know where you're watching that, but wherever it is, clap your hands. Hey, 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 hey. Clap your hands. We believe in his power. Listen. You're the God of miracles. We believe in your power. You're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. We believe in your power. We believe in your power. Come on, say, You're the God of miracles, signs and wonders. Signs 
in one time.
will seek your face. We will seek your faith. We need you to heal our land. Touch our government officials. Touch our president. Touch the body of Christ. Let your glory fall. a keeper you are the healer you are the miracle walker lord we bless you we give you all the thanks for you're the same yesterday you're the same today and you're the same forever we want to bless your holy name for you are a miracle walker you have done it before and you can do it again we give you all the praise that at this moment we have fellowship with you not because of what we have done but because of who you are we give you all the thanks that not, you're not looking for our sins to judge us but you are looking for your blood to bless us thank you lord that you are in us glorified and we are in you justified and nothing can ever separate us from your love lord we thank you for your word the word that says in matthew chapter 16 verse 19 that you have given us the keys to the kingdom and whatsoever things we bind on earth is bound in heaven whatsoever things we lose on earth is loosed in heaven we give you all the praise because right now at this moment we have the keys we have the keys the key is in our possession the key of favor is in our possession the key of long life and breakthrough is in our possession but lord what use is the key in our possession if the key is not in our confession so lord we elevate this key right now and we begin to confess we begin to bind and we begin to lose we begin to bind sickness and we lose healing we bind every spirit of condemnation and we release your righteousness we bind every spirit of pain and we release your power we begin to decree and declare that satan the blood of jesus is against you we plead the blood over our marriages we plead the blood over our finances we plead the blood over everything connected to us because the bible says whosoever the son of man has set free is free indeed we give you all the praise for you are a miracle walker in the mighty name of jesus we pray
Christ the solid rock I stand All of the crown the sweet is I'm standing on your promise Standing on your promise And I like this right here And you're doing it all again And you're doing it all again you turn it all again. And you turn it all again. You turn it all again. Over and over and over. Over and over and over. Over and over and over. Bro, guess what? It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Go, Keon. It's your birthday. No, I'm just playing. But listen, have fun, bro. I love you, man. Celebrate. You're a gift to the world. You're a gift to me. You're my brother and my best friend. You're an inspiration. You are a fresh wind. You are a trendsetter. You are a trailblazer. You are that dude. I love you, man. Happy birthday. And whatever you get, you owe me 10% because I footed the bill a long time ago just for you. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I will tell everybody everybody your stories. Love you, bro. Hey, this is Dr. Matthew Stevenson. I'm wishing a very special 39th birthday to my friend, my brother, my colleague, Pastor Keon Henderson. Listen, you are such an authentic leader. You're so pure and you have the heart to serve God's people. I enjoy watching how you love people and lead them in a way that can be trusted, navigating hundreds of lives, even families to the future. I got your back. I'm with you. I'm so appreciative of your consistent friendship, brotherhood, and support. Most importantly, I'm looking forward to seeing what's coming out of this season and this phase in your life and your future. Lighthouse, treat my brother good. He deserves it. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, man. I love you so much. This is The Shift. I know you wrote that book about The Shift, Changing Lives. Man, God has been with you for so many years. I love you, I appreciate you. You're a real man of God, an even realer brother, even realer friend. Happy, happy birthday, church. I hope y'all turn it up for my boy. He turning 39 years old. Keon, God is gonna keep using you. The best is yet to come. Thank you for being such an amazing friend. Amazing pastor. I'm excited to continue to do life and ministry with you. Happy 39th birthday, and let's turn up. Peace. Hello, son. On your 39th birthday, it affords me a great honor and a great pleasure to lift my voice up and my hand of blessing over you on your 39th birthday to celebrate with you and your friends and your congregation and all of those who surround you and adore you and appreciate you and value who you are in the earth. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your tenacity. Thank you for your forbearance and your discipline. And most importantly, your integrity. Because it is through those auspices that you are able to be as effective globally as you have become. Continue to preach his word in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke with all long suffering. Understanding that we are living in a time now that there are those who will have itching ears and will not respond to real truth. But do not allow them to discourage you or dissuade you from what God has called you to do. Stiffen your back and hold your head up and keep on preaching the word of God. Happy birthday to you. We love you from here at the Potter's House. Well, Pastor, man, you've heard uh, from some of your friends in the ministry, some of the greatest voices in the gospel. You've also heard from the campus pastors uh, those who God has appointed and anointed to help you lead the flock that God has given you responsibility over. But you know, people are going crazy, man, because they are not able to just be there with you during this whole birthday uh, day and, and an opportunity of love. So we made it special today for you. Uh, just to let you know how much we appreciate you, how much we enjoy all the hard work, all the love that you just shower upon us. And we also want to let you know, man, that we're gonna be there with you to hold your arms as you strive to do greater and more in this calling that God has given you. You're not a local preacher. You're not even a regional speaker. Man, God has given you a global voice. And we just wanna let you know that we're gonna support you and wrap our arms around you so that you can really accomplish all that God has laid on your heart to do. So for all of you who are not able to just sow 
your love into pastor right there personally as we would normally do it. We've given you the opportunity to do that by way of online through the Lighthouse website. You can give through the church app, TLHC, or you can do it through Give a Fly. But most importantly, you can text it in to us using the keyword B-Day. Listen to that word, B-Day. You can text it in to 832-924-0443. Again, the keyword is B-Day because we want to make sure that we give the opportunity to show and to share your love with one of the greatest men of God, our pastor, Pastor Keon Henderson. Listen, man, we love you. Make sure that you allow this day to be large. 39 years and 25 years of ministry. Listen, you know what the statistics say. At the age of 40 is when we really get our wisdom, when we really gain some sense. And at the age of 40, it's a big, big, big birthday. But man, we thank you for all the wisdom that you've given to us. Your wisdom goes far beyond your years. Just know I love you. The church loves you. Nothing you can do about it, man. See you soon. Happy birthday. In my life, be glorified, be glorified.
service. And again, um, thank you for allowing me to preach in this sweater. I didn't have to get dressed up, didn't have to go down to the sanctuary. I hope you enjoyed praise and worship. Uh, as you have heard, probably on the news or something like that, you've seen that uh, the COVID-19 numbers are at record highs here in the city of Houston, uh, in California, in Florida, Arizona, and different places. And so what we did is uh, we erred on the side of caution. Uh, got our buildings deep cleaned um, again, uh, made sure that the filters were changed, made sure that the uh, AC, HVAC was treated and fogged, um, just to make sure that all of our staff and volunteers uh, would have a safe environment. So thank you again uh, for the second week in a row, allowing uh, us to come into your homes from my home, and uh, hopefully you'll, you'll still get the same experience. Oh my God, how I enjoy it. Uh, speaking to you from Galatians 3 on last week, uh, talking about level ground and how there is no more uh, Jew or Gentile or black or white or male or female or slave or free, that at the foot of the cross, uh, that we're all equal. And I hope in our fight for justice as new cases are unearthed. And um, uh, I was reading just uh, last week how the uh, mayor of a town in Mississippi uh, was weeping online as he was removing Confederate flags from uh, public places. The world has turned its ear uh, to the plight of the African-American people and the world has come together. And you and I uh, have to keep our foot on the gas and to make sure that we're still uh, fighting for justice. But let's not forget that while we fight for justice, prior to that, uh, people like Paul, um, and people like Silas and people like John the Baptist were fighting for the faith. And let's make sure that uh, we also keep our minds focused uh, on the cause of Christ and to make sure that we're still understanding that the word of God is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Uh, as one songwriter said, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. And I have a feast for you today. And I hope that this word that I'm about to give you will really prick your heart and your conscience. And uh, I want you to get your Bible or your app or whatever you have. Um, and I want you to go to a very familiar passage of scripture. And although this uh, passage of scripture is familiar, I think that it still has power. Uh, let's go to Acts chapter two, verse two. Acts chapter two, verse two. And here's what the word of the Lord says in Acts two and two. Are you ready? It says, and suddenly, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. I'll read that again. And it says, and suddenly, not eventually, but suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. And when you see house, um, it's talking about the upper room where they were. The same upper room where we saw the disciples and, and Jesus um, having the last supper. So this is actually the upper room. And if I, had a, if I had to tag the text or if I had to give you a title, if I was preaching in the pulpit, I would call this, I want you to get this, it's called Inherited Wind. Inherited 
win. When I say inherited, I'm talking about how you would get something from a loved one. When my grandfather passed, uh, I inherited a ring that he used to wear all the time. When my uncle passed, I inherited his gold watch, uh, an inherited win. Um, I have um, a different experience. I wasn't born in the South. I love it in Houston. Houston is my town now. It's my city. Um, I, um, I experience uh, the best of times and the worst of times in this city, and that's what makes home home. But listen, I must tell you, uh, and I've got several staff members from my church who can attest to this, I was born in Gary, Indiana. I was raised in East Chicago, Indiana. Um, and if you know anything about that Midwestern town, and you can Google it and find out that if you look at the state of Indiana, Gary and East Chicago was right on the Western tip. And when you cross over the border, just 10 to 15 minutes, it's the third largest city in America, uh, Chicago, Illinois, the windy city, man. And let me tell you something about Chicago. It is beautiful. Um, the magnificent mile, uh, is amazing and there is shopping down there and um, if you are a sneakerhead uh, there's a place called Nike Town that's down there you can get any shoe that you want um, it's a great place but let me tell you something if you've never been there and all of my Chicagoites who, who, on the, who are on this um, uh, this Sunday morning service right now you can attest to this uh, ain't no cold like the cold of a Chicago winter now, you can say what you want to say about all the other cities, and I know everybody's got the spirit of comparison. They're going to come on and say, oh, no, Pastor, you got to go to Minnesota. I, I, I've i been I've been to St. Paul, Minneapolis. I've been there. Uh, I know people in Michigan are going to say, oh, no, you don't know. I, I get it. New York is cold. But let me tell you something. There is something about a Chicago wind that uh, if you're walking downtown uh, trying to get you some Harold's Chicken, uh, downtown Chicago, and once you come around that Hyatt Hotel and that convenience store right there on the corner, when that wind comes across your face, it does what they call smack the taste out of your mouth. Let me tell you, it is called the Windy City for something. Chicago gets so cold that you literally run from building to building. There's no, you, you, not in the wintertime, you don't, you don't just, uh, walk outside. I remember I took a group of people uh, from our church with me to preach at Dr. Matthew Stevenson's conference. And uh, we walked from the hotel to Harold's Chicken. Oh, yeah. All of my Houston staff members were just, oh, we can make it. Let me tell you, we walked out of that hotel and within a block, everybody had regrets about going to get these chicken wings and this french fries because that Chicago wind that Lake Michigan breeze uh, will hit you and make you wish that you would have stayed at home. We would run from building to building, door to door, just to seek cover and wait a little bit and then go further. I, I remember doing this as a kid. Why, why am I telling you this? Because growing up where I grew up, we grew up having an appreciation for the wind. We grew up having a healthy fear for the wind. Pastor, what I'm talking, what are you talking about? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. I grew up having an appreciation for the wind. So when I read Acts 2 and 2, I feel something different. I don't just read it and skip over it. I put myself in the place because the wind is so important to me that it made it into the introduction of my sermon. And the wind was so important to Luke that it made it into the introduction of his sermon in the book of Acts. When you go to Chicago and you go to the Magnificent Mile and you look at Grant Park where the taste of Chicago is and uh, the, the monuments downtown, You'll see people running through the park with kites. You know why? Because it's the Windy City. The city offers itself and lends itself to the success of kite flying. And if you look over into Lake Michigan, in certain parts and you look off in the distance, you'll see sailboats. 
You know why? Because the wind in the city lends itself to the successful launching of sailboats. If you go back to my hometown of Indiana, where there are nothing but cornfields between uh, Danville, Illinois, and all the way down uh, to Maryville and Cherville, and you've got all of these uh, open fields with corn, and you'll see in the distance huge windmills just blowing, providing electricity for all of the people in the city. But without the wind, there will be a lack of electricity in those areas because where I grew up in the Midwest, the crossroads, we understand the power of wind. Listen, wind is important because without wind, weather couldn't move. That means that without wind, the winter would never cease in the north and the summer would never start in the south. All weather would sit still if it wasn't for wind. If it wasn't for wind, see, naturally the earth is decaying, leaves fall from trees, they decay in the earth, pollution is in the air, but you know why you don't smell it every second of the day? You guessed it, because of the shifting wind. The wind keeps the smell of dead carcasses behind trees and dead fish in the water and, and decaying leaves on the ground. It just, it just continues to make it move. And, and, and that's why wind is so important. Wind is so important, uh, and I hope you're staying with me because I'm, I'm laying the case. I want you to read Revelation 7 and 1 when you get an opportunity. The Bible says in Revelation 7 and 1, it says, after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, watch this, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or any tree. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. In Revelation 7, when it talks about the angels holding back the wind, it is getting into a conversation about the rapture coming which means that if there is no wind there is rapture the wind is so important that as long as you feel it you know the earth shall remain the wind is so important that when you feel it when you feel the breeze it's a sign that jesus has not yet returned but when he does return the angels will hold back the winds that's how important winds are winds are even a sign of the actual presence of the rapture. So the fact is that wind is important. But although wind is important, here is something I know. Here's something you know. Wind cannot be seen. Wind can only be heard or felt. I hope you're getting this. Now let's go back to the text. What does it say? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house. How did they know? They couldn't see the wind. That's why the Bible says that was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Because wind can only what? Be heard. That's right. And be felt. Luke said, on the day of Pentecost, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, just remember, just a few weeks ago, the church only had 12 members. Remember, Jesus Christ has been crucified. He's gone back to be at the right hand of the Father, and the only people who were left were the disciples. And, and the truth is, only 11, because one of them had committed suicide. So there were 12 members of the church, 11 remaining. One is getting ready to be on an island. Another is getting ready to be depressed. Another one's getting ready to be persecuted. So they're fracturing right before their eyes. But when we get to Acts 2, in the upper room, the church has grown from 12 to 120. To 120. From 12 to 120, and they are in the upper room. And guess what? If you read Acts chapter one and four, you find out what they're doing in the upper room. They're waiting on the promise 
of the Lord. Remember, he told them, I'm going to go back to be with the Father, and I shall leave you a helper in the earth, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. So I'm going to leave you a helper in the earth. And God makes that promise. And then suddenly, guys, listen. And suddenly they heard a wind. Now, they are desperate. In some cases, they are hungry. They are frustrated. They are mourning. Their king has just died. Can you imagine walking with somebody like Jesus for three years and he leaves? You think the pain of losing a father and I have is hard? You think the pain of losing a brother and I have is hard? Imagine losing your savior. Imagine losing the person who gave you an opportunity when no one else paid you attention. John was nobody until he was connected to Jesus. Peter was just a fisherman before he was connected to Jesus. There was nothing about his life that showed that he would preach on the day of Pentecost, but Jesus saw something in him. And imagine this man who allowed you to betray him and deny him, but still loves you unconditionally, has now left, and you're right back in the hands of modern, ordinary people who judge you, who lie on you, they are in pain. And Jesus is gone. And then they're sitting there waiting on the promise of the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, the sound of a wind comes. I hope you hear this. Listen, one thing we must see is that the promise of God first came in a sound. It wasn't the Holy Spirit that they experienced first, it was the sound. Why? Because if you're ever going to inherit the wind, you must first hear him. <laughs> you got to first hear him. Everybody wants the promises of God. All of his promises are yes and amen. And everybody wants to raise on the job. And everybody wants low interest rates on the mortgage. And everybody wants health in the body. And everybody wants the cancer to disappear. And I want all of those things. And everybody wants to live a full life till they're 90 years old and never have a heart attack and, and never have a blood clot and never have a seizure and never experience COVID. I don't want any of those things. I don't want to die in a car accident. I don't want to die from a freak accident. I like you and like Martin Luther King says, I do not have a martyr's complex. I want all of the promises. I want all of the money that God has with my name on it. I want all of the riches I'm told. I want the houses and the land. I want the cattle on a thousand hill. I want the silver and the gold. But God says, I'm going to give you all of the promises, but you must first hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. There was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. God wants to make sure, listen, that you can hear him before you see him. He wants, to, he wants you to hear him before you can see him. Here it is. Watch this. You want Bible? I've got it. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That word hearing in the, in, in the original language, Akaya, it is to instruct. Because God has to instruct us before he can bless us. The man was able to walk after 40 years of not walking. Why? Because he was able to hear God. There is always a word before we. There is always some word that you must obey before you see God working it out in your life. Lord, help us. Because I want the blessings and I want the promises. If my people who are called by my name and humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. See, you gotta hear that instruction. Hey everybody, I hope that you are enjoying the first part of this word, an inherited wind. I hope it's a fresh look at a old text. You know, I'm excited about being able to bring the word of God to you like this through technology. And as we said, the COVID numbers are so high in Houston, we thought it not safe for us to come together for a couple of weeks. We've getting, we're have getting we getting the building deep cleaned and all of those things. And so it's just kind of a raw, uh, semi-edited version of what we are trying to do to get the word to you. And we're all doing what we can to, to stay safe. 
Uh, but I wanted to let you know, uh, just to pause and say, you know what, I appreciate you for your support of our ministry. And uh, you watching is one way of supporting, you sharing is another way of supporting. But I also want to thank you for you seeding. Uh, the Bible talks about how uh, in the Word of God in Galatians 3 and 19, uh, that after the seed shall come. There, there are some things that didn't happen into the church until the seed came. And there are some things in your life that won't happen until you sow the right seed. And I want to give you an opportunity right now. Uh, they're going to put up on the screen the three ways that you can give. You can text to give. Uh, you can go to our website and give. Uh, you can go through our app and give. Um, and then thank God for all of you all who've been coming to the church and dropping your tithes and off and off in person or mailing them. We are allocating all of them correctly. Uh, we're continuing the ministry. Uh, we're continuing to feed people. Uh, we're continuing uh, to do all of the things that we were doing when the building was open. Because remember, you got it. The building may be closed, but the doors of the church are still open. So thank you for your tithes. Thank you for your offerings. Uh, I need you to do that now. And then guess what? I'm getting ready to pitch you right back to the service for the second half. And then I'll come afterwards to see how you enjoy it. So here's the second half of our sermon today, Inherited Wind. To instruct. That's what the original word of here in that text means. It means to instruct. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you ready for the revelation? Here it is. So if you translate that word and it actually means instruction, then the Bible says faith comes by instruction. Faith comes by instruction. Listen to me. I know you want the promises of God. I want them. I know you want them to keep your children safe. I want my daughter safe. But here's what God says. Are you ready? I will never intrude where I cannot instruct. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> I will never intrude where I cannot instruct. Don't look for me to intrude and get my blessings when you will not receive my instruction. There came the sound of a wind before they saw the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Here it is. You got to hear him. Everybody just type hear him. That is the first rule of defense. It is the first rule of survival. It is the first rule of faith. It is the first rule of blessing. When you DM me and say, Pastor, I feel lost and I don't know what to do, I'm going to start typing back, hear him. Pastor, I, I feel insecure and I don't know how to get over it. Hear him. Pastor, I need a blessing. Hear him. Pastor, would you pray for me? Yes, after you hear him. You got to hear him. Faith comes by hearing. He says, I cannot intrude where I cannot instruct. What if Lazarus couldn't hear? He would have still been in the grave. Remember, God came in the grave after he had not shown up for four days. He came after his family had gotten in an argument. He came after his sisters couldn't get along. He came after his body decayed. So much so the Bible says that when Jesus went into his tomb, it stunk. Lazarus didn't say, I ain't coming out of here because you didn't show up when I wanted you to. And, you know, everybody's mad at God because they're looking at the earth and they're saying, well, if God is so good, why are bad things happening? That's the problem. You don't get to ask God questions like that. You got to hear him before you can ask anything of him. He says, he goes in and says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, without an excuse, gets up and comes out of the tomb in his grave clothes. Why? Because you have to hear him. You have to hear him. Lazarus, he called his name. After he heard him, then he gives him instruction. Come forth. You got to hear him. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus was able to get up out of his stinking place because he could hear him. You remember when the people in John chapter 2 ran out of wine? What does Jesus say? Bring me the water pots. We would never have a water to wine miracle if they couldn't hear him. Remember the man's hand was atrophied and it was drawn up and Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. Listen, if the man had never heard him, his hand would have never come out. The man was laying on the bed. Jesus says, pick up your bed and walk. Why? Because God 
has to instruct us before he can bless us. The man was able to walk after 40 years of not walking. Why? Because he was able to hear God. There is always a word before wind. There is always some word that you must obey before you see God working it out in your life. Lord, help us. Because I want the blessings and I want the promises. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. See, you got to hear that instruction. There is always a word before a wind. What's your word? What has God continuously told you to do? Your word isn't my word. My word isn't your word. What area of fallacy have you continuously been tripped up by? And God is just waiting on you to hear what his promises were in that area. Remember when the devil tempted Jesus? Jesus didn't get all riled up. He just told the devil what he heard. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What have you heard? Not, not what have you seen. I know you've seen a miracle, but what have you heard? Who do men, this is Jesus, say that I am? Tell me what you heard. I, I want to know what's in the streets because I, I, I need to hear. And one of the things that I've learned that is most, di most difficult about our generation is our inability to listen. Come, let us reason together, the scripture says. Why? Because you got to hear him. How many of you all have children? How many of you either punish or spank them when they don't hear you? How many of you know that your children are in their room right now and have before, and you've called him and said, Johnny, no answer. Johnny hears you, but he understands that on the other end of hearing you is an instruction. <laughs> Take out the trash. Or if you watch Friday, go get me some water. Why? Because we know that on the other end of that voice is an instruction. God says, I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. And, and that wind came suddenly. So it didn't come with a siren or a warning. It's not Oklahoma City. It's not going to, there's no siren coming. He, he says, and suddenly the wind came because you don't get to take your time listening to him. I encourage you to listen to him suddenly. I encourage you to listen to him immediately. And if you read the scripture, every time you see suddenly and immediately God did something, and I don't know why I'm prophesying to somebody, get ready for a suddenly in your life. Get ready for God to do something suddenly. As soon as you hear him, the miracle is going to come suddenly. As soon as you hear him, the healing is going to come suddenly. As soon as you hear him, the raise on the job is going to come suddenly. As soon as you hear him, the depression is going to erase itself suddenly. As soon as you hear him, the insecurity is going to evaporate suddenly. Somebody just type it again, hear him. It came suddenly, by surprise, off guard. God is about to shock you. I feel like running. I feel like shouting, and I know it's Sunday, and I know I'm not in the pulpit, and I know I'm not on the stage. I'm sitting behind the desk at my house, but listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to know. I want you to feel it. I want you to believe it. I want you to hear the words that are getting ready to come out of my mouth. God is about to shock you. The moment you hear him, you're going to see the floodgates of heaven open and God's going to pour you out a blessing you will not have room enough to receive. Get ready for him to bless your children suddenly. Get ready for him to bless your family suddenly. Get ready for him to bless your finances suddenly. Get ready for him to bless your vision suddenly. Get ready to get ideas that are going to create wealth in your life suddenly. Get ready for to find a spouse suddenly. Get ready for a man to find his good thing in you, woman of God, suddenly. Believe me when I tell you, there is a suddenly spirit over this Sunday morning service. And if you're watching this at night, the promises of God have no shelf life. The word of God is still for you. 
Get ready for God to do it suddenly. Just type suddenly. Just shout suddenly. Everybody in the house ought to be saying suddenly. If you can translate it into dog, make him bark suddenly. There is something that's about to catch you off guard. A check in the mail that you did not plan for. A deposit that you did not expect. Can I tell you what just happened to me? Can I tell you? that for the last eight months, I keep getting my electric bill, my gas bill in the mail, eight months straight. And every time I get my electric and gas bill, there is a negative sign in front of the number. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I overpaid, all I know is that for eight months, Centerpoint has been covering my bill. <laughs> Don't tell me about the favor of God. And it doesn't matter that the bill isn't astronomical. All it shows me is that God can put a negative sign in front of a debt and he can erase it and he can do it suddenly. Maybe I'll get a bill again one day soon. But somehow, I overpaid to the place where for eight months straight, I haven't had a bill. And let me tell you, some of y'all will be shouting right now because you had a sin debt that you could not pay. And every time that bill comes due and it matures, there was a negative sign in front of it that says not guilty and paid in full because suddenly Jesus Christ died on the cross and immediately all of your sins were erased and it didn't take time and it didn't happen over process. The moment he got up, you got up. And I'm telling you to get ready for God to erase debts and get ready for him to do it. There you go. Suddenly, you got to hear him. I hope you're hearing me. As I'm used as a vessel today for him, I hope you're hearing him. But number two, after you hear him, you got to know him. You got to know him. Notice where the sound came from. God wanted them to know where this wind came from. He didn't want them to think that Elijah sent it. He didn't want them to think that this was a wind from John the Baptist. This wasn't a Buddha wind. This wasn't a Confucius wind. This, is, this wasn't an Allah win. The Bible says that the sound came from heaven. He didn't want them to doubt where this wind had come from. He leaves no doubt where it come from. There came a sound of a mighty Russian wind from, you guessed it, from heaven. When you read 1 Samuel chapter 3, you see a story about a woman named Hannah who has a son named Samuel. And there was a priest in the house, an old man who's getting ready to die. His name is Eli. And the Bible says the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. Did you call me? And then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy after three times. And this is what he told him. He said, if he calls you again, Say, speak, Lord. Hear him. Speak, Lord. The fourth time, he says, speak, Lord. And now Samuel has a relationship with God himself. I'm proving the point. That first of all, Samuel had to hear him three times. On the fourth time, he knew him. You see, you, you got to be able to hear him before you know him. You got to be able to hear him before you can be blessed by him. And when he said, Lord, speak, he becomes the new prophet because God wanted to make sure that he could hear him before he could use him. Goodness. Before God can use you to make millions, you got to hear him in your hundreds. Before God can use you to be rich, can you hear him poor? Before God can raise you up from the sickness, can you hear him when you need a healing? Before God can put you in the mansion, can you hear him in your apartment? Samuel was able to hear him. My sheep 
know my voice and a stranger they will not can you hear him because if you can hear him you will know him and when you get to know him you'll know that once you press through the crowd see when you know him you can touch the hem of his garment and be made whole and by the way thank you holy spirit for the revelation as long as the woman with the issue of blood was going to the doctors their medicine could do no good but once she said if i can get to him she heard about him and then when she touched him she knew him here's what the bible says and immediately suddenly her issue left him because the moment you know who he is 12 years can stop in 12 seconds the moment you know him a depression that's lasted for five years can be erased in five minutes i'm not saying that you don't need counseling i'm not saying that a psychiatrist will not do because i believe those things work in the earth but there is something about knowing him and the pardon of your sins the moment i gave jesus christ my life i didn't give him my life at six and get saved at 38 the moment i gave him my life he gave me his hand the moment i gave him my life he had my back and i was saved from the damnation and consequences of sin the moment i confessed with my mouth the lord jesus because when i knew him it was the result of me hearing him my sheep know my voice and the stranger they will not hear i hear him i know him and now i can feel him i can feel him i can feel him how many of y'all remember in the old church they can say yes god is real how do you know i can feel him Woo! i know that's traditional <laughs> i know i know they don't say that in the church no more and i know some of y'all don't feel that because they may not sing that in your church but they would say yes god is real yes god is real and 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 it will make you rock yes god is real and how do i know because i can feel him down in my soul see the wind cannot be seen but it can be heard there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind that filled the house feel feeling so they go from what that's right hearing him to what that's right knowing him and now that they know him they can feel him see it's one thing for economic recovery to happen but it don't matter what the market is doing because most of you and most of us don't have money in the stock market like that so they can talk about the nasdaq and dow jones you hear that but you don't feel that if you don't own a million shares in apple if, if you don't have a pension plan if you don't have a 401k if you don't have a mutual fund if you don't have a roth ira they can talk about the market all you want and you can hear it on talk radio and you can hear it on cnn and you can hear it on fox news and you can hear it on msnbc but if you're not invested you don't feel it if the only money you make is the check from your employer and you haven't diversified your portfolio you can hear about all of this economic recovery and you're like where that because you hear it but you don't feel it but watch god he moves from being known in their life to being felt in their life and when god formed man in the original text genesis he formed him perfectly but not completely i'm still making my argument because and suddenly there came a wind the wind the wind the wind see i know the power of wind because when the wind moves things that are stagnant in your life change when the wind moves when the wind moves it makes you make different decisions and I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand that god's about to send a wind in your life that that dark cloud that's been over your life god's about to blow it away that depression that's been hanging and hovering over you god's about to blow it away listen here it is thank you holy spirit some of y'all have been in fear 
for the last nine months. God says, I'm about, I'm about to send a wind and I'm about to blow that fear away. Some of y'all have been hesitant. God says, I'm about to blow hesitation out of you. Some of y'all have been procrastinating. You got a big idea, but you've been, you've been afraid and you've been holding back. God says, I'm about to send a wind on you that's going to give you the boldness of John the Baptist. You're about to feel what you've been praying for. Don't you make me start preaching. You're about to feel what you fasted for. You are about to feel what you went through all that hell and high water for. You're about to feel what God was doing in your life when you had to grow up without a father and grow up without a mother and be raised by a grandparent and, 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 and be raised in poverty and on the wrong side of the tracks and experience racism and classism and sexism. God says, I'm about to I'm about to blow a wind. That thing that's been hovering over you is about to move. You're about to feel why you have the struggle. You're about to feel the effects of why you have to go through what you went through. Somebody type it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Yes, God is real. I can feel him. And it almost makes me want to sing it. Yes. And, and, and then this is what they said after they said, I can feel him. They had to testify to everybody who was in the room who may have not heard that song before. Then they would get to the chorus. Yes, God is real. Oh, yes, God is real. I can't. How do I know it's real? Because I can right back where I start. I can feel him. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. I can feel him in my soul. When God formed man, he made him complete. He made him perfectly. But here it is. He didn't make him complete. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know you're about to send me a direct message. Huh, Pastor, you had me, you had me, you were talking good. What do you mean that God made him perfectly, but he didn't make him completely? Everything that God does, he does it in abundance. Everything that God does, he does it in completion. Absolutely. When he created the trees, he didn't have to add anything to it. When he created the grass, it was good. When he created the light, he didn't have to turn it up or turn it down. It was good. When he created the and separated light from the darkness and the spirit hovered over the water and he created the fowl of the sea, he didn't have to give the fish extra skin and extra gills and extra scales. Everything they had, they had. When he made the snake, he didn't have to make any changes until after the fall. When he made the tiger, he gave them everything that they would ever have. They had whiskers and stripes and claws and teeth and muscle, and he didn't have to do anything else because after he made the lion, it was good. After he made the ape, it was good. After he made the giraffe, it was good. After he made the elephant, it was good. He created everything perfectly, but when he got to man, he created him perfectly, but he did not make him complete. Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? Here it is. Read the book of Genesis. He reaches down in the ground, spits in the dirt, forms man, and creates him, but leaves him. It wasn't until he breathed into him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You see, he made him perfectly, but he wasn't complete until he put wind in him. Because once he put wind in him, now he could play instruments for his glory. Once he put wind in him, praise could come out of his mouth. Once he put wind in him, he could give God glory. You can't even praise God without wind. You can't even play instruments without wind. You couldn't blow a saxophone without wind. You couldn't blow a trumpet without wind. Without wind, the walls of Jericho would have never fallen. Why? Because they had to shout and play instruments. Some things in your life won't happen until you get access to that wind. And God says there is a wind coming in your life right now. When the wind came on the original church, it grew from 12 to 120. And on the day of Pentecost, after the wind, it grew to 3,000 and then 5,000. And countless Christians are in the earth right now. According to Revelation 7, the Bible says, after this, behold, I looked up and I saw a number that no man can count. The original church had 12. By the time we get to John in the book of Revelation, he saw a number that no man could count. And I decree and declare that after you get to the place where you can, watch this, yeah, yeah, hear him and then see him and then feel him and know him, here's what's getting ready to happen. God's about to take you from a number you can see to a number that you cannot count. 
Get ready for money that is going to come in abundance where you cannot count it. Get ready for God to give you more than you have room enough to receive. There is a win coming on your life. Get ready for exponential growth. I'm not talking about addition. I'm talking about multiplication. Look what the wind will do. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you ought to just say the wind's about to do it. I prophesy a fresh wind over you. I prophesy a new wind over you. I prophesy that the Lamb of God is getting ready to put new robes on your frame. I pray that palms and psalms will come into your hands. I pray that a new wind is getting ready to come over you. You're going to go from depression to sitting on the throne of life. Why? Because there was a wind coming. There was a fresh wind. Life as you know it is no more. The struggle as you knew it, it's over. I decree it today in the name of Jesus. Somebody type, the struggle is over. The struggle is over. There is a wind that's about to come. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not a new wind. It's not an undefined wind. It's a wind that you can trust. Ask the great cloud of witness. This wind works. It's an inherited wind. It's the same wind that made the hair stand up on the back of Peter, James, and John's neck. It's the same wind that got the disciples and Jesus in that ship to the other side of the lake to get to the demonic man. It's the same wind that John the Baptist felt when he was baptizing Jesus in the muddy Jordan River and heard a sound from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is the same wind that caught Elijah up in the whirlwind and took him to heaven without dying. This is the same wind that blew Joseph from the pit to the palace. This is the same wind that sustained Abraham in an arid land. This is the same wind that led Moses through the wilderness and the same wind that got the baton and the uh, Aaron's rod into the hand of Joseph, Joshua. It's the same wind that led Mary to Bethlehem where she could give birth to a son and wrap him in swaddling clothes. It's the same wind that's gonna to come to your street, your address, your city, your town. It's an inherited wind. Oh, my brothers, I hope I encourage you today. Oh, my sisters, I hope I just put a smile on your face. It's an inherited wind. The same wind from the upper room is getting ready to come into your bedroom. Woo. The same wind from 2,000 years ago is blowing in your house now. I don't know about you. I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing up. I feel the wind of the Holy Ghost. I speak wind on your finances. I speak wind on your health. It's the same wind that's going to blow racism out of our country in God's time. It's the same wind that's going to bring equality from the upper class to the lower class to the middle class. It's the same wind that at the foot of the cross, the ground will be level. I speak a fresh wind over your life. I speak a fresh wind over your family. Yeah, better yet, I speak an inherited wind from heaven to the earth. God bless you. Well, tell me, did you enjoy the message? Uh, I hope you did. I hope it was a fresh word. I hope it was an on-time word. And just remember, the word of God is definitely a lamp to our feet and it's a light to our path. It's an inherited wind. Get ready for new things, new opportunities. Get ready for God to blow your mind. It's not gonna happen eventually. I prophesy to some of you, it's getting ready to happen suddenly. Thank you so much uh, for uh, tuning in. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. Uh, thank you so much for your support um, of all of the things we do, whether it be our podcast, whether it be our social media, whether it be uh, you have purchased the book, The Ship, whether you're going to purchase it in the future, or perhaps you've shared it with somebody, uh, whether you've gotten it on an audio book or whether you've gotten it in a hard copy. Thank you for all you do, because my mother told me one thing, people don't have to be nice. And when they are nice, they don't have to be nice to you. Thank you 
for being nice to us. And I hope that our ministry is a blessing to you. Till the next time, may God bless you. And I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Man, what an amazing word from Pastor this morning. Man, did you enjoy that word this morning? I have most of the time. Man, it really blessed our hearts. Listen, we have three opportunities for you to give on this morning. They're right below the screen. Just take some time, press those buttons. However it is that you give into the kingdom of God, take advantage of this opportunity right now because you know when you sow into the kingdom of God, the Lord does not hesitate in returning that right back to you. Also, if you want to connect with us spiritually, well then you could, there's a number you can call on the screen as well. Get connected. Someone will get right back with you as soon as possible because we want to bring you into the kingdom, wrap our arms around you, and just let you know how much we love you. Listen, if you didn't have an opportunity to watch this service this morning, why don't you go back to YouTube? Hey, listen, even share it with someone. Mm -hmm. There's somebody out there who needs to hear this word this morning. We love you. I want to go to the Lord in prayer with you. Father God, we thank you, God, for this word. We thank you, Lord, for the man of God who delivered it to us. We also, God, thank you for another year of life that you've given to him. Increasing God in ways unimaginable. Give him, God, prosperity, Lord, that goes beyond his understanding. And God, we thank you, Lord, for those who are going to be brought into your fold, into the kingdom, God, through the word that was given today. We thank you for them. All these blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Promise, are you ready? When I'm moving, you move just like that. When I run, you run just like that. Are you ready? Breaking news, very sad news to tell the sports world. The LA Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed. Rapper Pop Smoke has been shot and killed in what appears to be a home invasion robbery here in Los Angeles. 135, they're burning right now, scorching more than 14 million acres of land. It's Friday night, as more state and local public health labs have been able to perform tests for the novel coronavirus. It's one third of the Italian population currently on lockdown. All three of Wall Street's major indexes plunged more than 7% on Monday. The coronavirus pandemic has brought the U.S. economy to a standstill, causing unemployment to triple in less than two months. Many small businesses, they are struggling to survive at this point. Some are even on the verge of collapsing. The Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo will be shut down for the rest of the season. The NBA has suspended the season. 2020 Olympic Games may be canceled. Officials found a noose in the garage of driver Bubba Wallace. Bubba. Another death at the hands of police. New outcries across the country. George Floyd. Elijah McClain. Fatal shooting of Ahmaud Arbery. Oh, shoot.